In this tutorial, we are going to do simple manipulations to these three shapes to create our basic tangram square. So let's get started. We'll start off easy with the square. When you look at our tangram, notice that our square shape resembles a diamond. This is a 45 degree rotation. Make sure you have the selection tool selected or press V on your keyboard. Select the square shape and let's drag it onto the tangram for now. With it selected, let me show you two easy ways to rotate it. First, there is the free rotate method. Again, make sure the square is selected. Move your mouse over one of the white selection points. Notice how the cursor changes. The diagonal arrows mean scale, which we will look at in a moment. But if you hover just outside the white selection point, notice how it changes to an arc with arrows. That means rotate. When it is in that position, you can click and freely rotate the object around its center point. Now, if you want to constrain the rotation to 45 degree angles, you hold down the shift key while you click and rotate. When you let go, you will see it rotated to the correct position. And just so you know, the shift key is often used to constrain any element. Now, if you didn't get it right, just click edit undo or control plus z on your keyboard which will undo your actions one step at a time now there's also the mathematical way to rotate make sure your object is selected and then look at your transform panel this little icon right here is the rotation the drop down has presets but none of which we need so in this case you can type in 45 and there you go this is helpful if you are trying to fine tune a rotation in a more complicated scenario. I will often start with the free rotate and then clean it up in the transform panel. With the selection tool, or press V on the keyboard, click and drag the square until it sits on top of the square or diamond on the tangram. Notice how it snaps into place. This is because we have smart guides turned on. All right, now let's work with the triangle. Select and drag it over your tangram. With the object selected, go to your transform panel. Select the flip along the vertical axis. Drag the triangle so the base of your triangle lines up with the top of the color tangram. Play around till you see that intersect line. Now, you'll notice how the intersect line extends down into the diamond shape. That's letting you know that the current object you have selected, its center is intersecting with the center of the object below. Smart guides will often look at the placement of your object in relation to the artboard and other objects on it. The intersect line will normally show you where or how your selected object will line up or intersect with another. Okay, so with this shape in place, the good news is we will use the same shape for several of the other shapes. With your shape selected, Press Ctrl C on your keyboard to copy. Then Ctrl V as in Victor to paste. Let's rotate it 90 degrees. Remember, we can hold the shift key to rotate it in 45 degree increments. Move your mouse slightly past one of the white selection points. Click and hold shift and rotate it till it matches triangle shape A. Drag this over triangle A. Notice I have two intersection lines. The center point of the triangle tip aligns with the center of the artboard square, vertically and horizontally. With our current triangle selected, let's press Ctrl C to copy, but don't paste it yet. We're gonna do something a little bit different. Go up to edit and choose paste in place. This will paste a copy of your triangle in the exact same place it was copied from. Now it may not seem like it did anything, but trust me, you have a copy there. If you have doubts, you can always move it to C. Now I'm gonna press Control Z to undo that move. With the copy selected, go to your transform panel. In this square rubric, notice that the center point is selected. This is the point from which the transform will take place. If I flip it, it will flip it along that center reference point. So let's change that. Click the middle point on the right. 
Now click flip along horizontal axis. By changing the reference point, we can control the direction from which it flips from. Now let's go ahead and shrink this size up. Hover your mouse over one of the white selection points. Notice the icon change to a directional arrow. This is free scale mode. Notice if I click and drag the mouse, it scales, but it distorts the original shape. So to constrain it, we will hold down the shift key. This keeps it constrained to its original shape as we change its size. Now, just in case, if you have been following along or made a mistake, always remember that you can press Ctrl Z on your keyboard till you get back to the state that you need to be. Ctrl Z will always undo. Now, holding down the shift key, when I select and drag the far right center point towards the inner dot, notice how it's difficult to see underneath it. Press Ctrl Z to undo. With the object selected, let's change the opacity to 50. This allows us to see through the object. With the triangle selected, let's hold down the shift key to constrain it and drag the far right center point towards the left point of the triangle. When you have it in place, go ahead and let go of the mouse button. And let's change the opacity back to 100. And let's just do one more check with our shape. If you need reassurance if you got it where it needs to be and it's the correct size, go ahead and make your width 1.5 and your height 3. Now let's copy and paste this triangle. Control C to copy, Control V as in Victor to paste. Use the free rotation method to match triangle E below. We're going to hold down the shift key to constrain our rotations to 45 degrees and then rotate it twice, or 90 degrees. Let's move and place it over the E triangle. Again, look at that intersection. You can sort of feel it snapping in place. All right, we just have one more triangle. Select the one you just created. Again, let's do Control C to copy. And this time, choose Edit, Paste in Place, or Control Shift V on the keyboard. Hold down the Shift key and rotate it till it matches the overall shape we are trying to fill. I'm having to rotate it about three times. Let's drag it so the bottom right corner lines up with the bottom right corner of the color tangram. Now let's scale it to fit the space. I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to select the center point and pull it out till it snaps to the right corner of the diamond. Finally, let's select the rectangle. Now I'll explain the why of the following action in an upcoming video. With the rectangle selected, in your quick action, select arrange and bring to front. This will bring the rectangle to the front of the artboard, or the very top. Place it so it fills the last shape horizontally. We'll fix its overall shape in just a moment. Now in the transform panel, make sure that the center reference point is selected. Set the Y to 2.75. This will make sure the center of our rectangle is sitting on the y-axis at 2.75 inches. We'll talk about this in our next tutorial. In the toolbar, locate the rotation tool. Right-click it and choose the shear tool. Now for this one, let's do something different. Double-click the shear tool in the toolbar. This will bring up a pop-up dialog box. Make sure the preview button is selected. This will allow you to see the changes that you are making live without committing to them. In the shear angle, make that minus 45. And for the axis, choose vertical. Notice how it fills in the shape. Hit OK. Finally, let's go ahead and save our file. Go to File, Save, or press Ctrl S on your keyboard.